And speaking of Morbius, the Morbius trailer dropped on Monday. I did a reaction to it here on the channel. I got to, I actually kind of like the trailer. I mean, I was I wasn't really looking forward to Morbius and then I was even less looking forward to Morbius and they kept pushing it back. And this last trailer had enough Michael Keaton's vulture to make me go, maybe I'm interested in this movie. But the the one thing and it makes me more interested than anything is that I love Spider-Man and this is a character that brings us closer to the Sony Spider-Man Spider-Verse. The Sinister Six is clearly on their minds over there at Sony. Steve, I know you watched the trailer. What were your thoughts on it? It didn't do much for me, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, if anything, it just, uh, you know, paint, painted Morbius as maybe, oh, possibly, is he the bad guy? Is he a villain? Are you going to, are you going to lean into being a bad guy? I don't know. I mean, it didn't, it didn't influence me one way or another whether I want to see this movie or not. Um, for me, I'm going to wait and see what the fans think, you know, what the general word of mouth is before I decide if I want to go to the theater to see it or if I'm going to wait to stream it at, at home. Uh, I'm not saying it was a bad trailer. It just it did nothing for me. Yeah, Scotty? Have they, have they mentioned who uh, Matt Smith's character is? Because maybe I know it because it's a rumor or a leak. Yes. Can, his name is Milo, and I think he's a character that you're thinking of, but they've changed his origin so that he grew up being best friends with Morbius, yep. and they both have like the same disease, but his name is is Milo in this one. He's going to be the villain, yep. obviously. Yeah, and in the comics, the character is Hunger, and he's also a living <clears throat> yes. vampire, and he also mm -hmm. suffers from the same ailments where he can operate in the day, but tends to stick to the shade, those kind of things. But I guess it's like, um, you know, they both have these injuries. And so it heals them at the same time as cursing them. I hope they don't kill him like they did. They did with like this whole Venom Carnage thing and like just put him in one movie and then you're you're maybe done with him. Because uh, I think Sony needs those like individualized stories for their villains, I guess. Because if they're really yeah. going to keep them away from Spider-Man until the very, very end, are they all going to just have ancillary? It's like the, it's like a mirror. You know, we have Venom, we have Spider-Man, we have Morbius, now we have this guy. And it's, you know, all their villains kind of are the same in that, res that respect. I remember when uh, Tim Burton's Batman came out and I watched it with my parents and the movie ended and the Joker dies. Spoiler. And my mom says, Joker doesn't die. Joker, Joker doesn't die. He gets away every time. And there's this obsession with the the villain has to be dead at the end of all of these superhero movies, right? There's obviously exceptions mm -hmm. to the rule, whatever. But most of the time, the villain ends up dead at the end. And you're like, oh, well, that's that's it. I like they did, like keep it going, keep it like keep this character going, make him an antagonist for for longer than just one movie. I'm with you on that. Why why have I don't know. It just seems like it's such a waste and lazy storytelling just to kill someone off right away when you haven't like give them an arc, give them a three movie arc, give the villain an arc with the hero. That's what I was like for just storytelling. Comics have them go on forever, and these, especially, I mean, Sony's not the MCU, but the MCU is like the comics, right? It's like a TV show. It just keeps going, right? Like King King doesn't die in the first episode of Hawkeye. Well, he did actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid that they're going to rush their Spider-Verse to try to catch yes. up to like, because Marvel already has a Thanos. Now they're going to eventually have a Doctor Doom. They have a Kang. They have all these arcs already. And Sony's just like sitting over here with their Null in the corner or their Madam Web over here or, you know, like, so they're, they're rushing some of this. I got a feeling just to get up, which caught up, which Steve is par for the course for Sony. We see the first, like, the the Sam Raimi Spider Man movies they they rush in Venom they rush the third one with Venom and they have, throw in every villain and mm -hmm. then they did it again with the Amazing Spider Man they're like throw in every villain in that one and we're <laughs> gonna tease the Sinister Six like this is part of the course for Sony right Steve yeah pretty much they got a track record of that and um, <laughs> I'm a little I'm a little leery of them rushing things and uh, I don't know by all accounts that's what it looks like we're they're they're doing with this proof you know hopefully I'm wrong hopefully uh. Hopefully they have their plan and we'll we'll all it'll all make sense to us after we see this movie, but maybe not. Who knows? Yeah, who know? this trailer did I think the effects look great. But one thing we gotta talk about is uh Spider-Man in this movie. Recent rumors, Scotty, have suggested that the post-credit scene for Morbius will include possibly 
an Andrew Garfield or Tobey Maguire Spider-Man appearing in the post credit do you think that fits do you think it would be actually them or would it be a variant of them and would you be i mean i think you would be but would you be keen to see one of those two spider-man in a post-credit scene for morbius it's tough and i hate that they have him say we are venom and i hate that michael (laughs) keaton is focused uh i think if it's gonna be anybody it's gonna be toby because then that links a venom. Yeah. So Morbius may have seen the whole debacle between, you know, that venom and Toby, but that still doesn't correlate why vultures there, or is it a variant that, you know, it's weird. the, The one thing though, Steve is variants now get them out of any situation they want. It's a variant. That's all they have to do now. It's a yeah. You know, it, it's an easy card for them to play, but yep. maybe that gets us the better story. I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, we talk about DC all the time. It's like, you know, Batman. We don't want Batman being with any other character, but we're gonna go watch Aquaman that's connected to this. That's connected to that. So maybe this Sony verse is just the Sony verse, and that's it. And it doesn't have to be connected. And because we saw Venom obviously go into the MCU, but then he leaves the MCU. So maybe the Sony verse is its own universe in the multiverse and maybe spider-man doesn't exist in that universe uh but like i said andrew garfield just denied again that he's coming back as spider-man and in that denial he said no one's ever gonna believe me anymore so he acknowledges the fact that he does it but so i don't know if it's him i don't know if it's toby mcguire i think if toby mcguire shows up it's more likely to be in doctor strange 2 uh, if, if we do get him, I think mm-hmm. that's where he will land. I don't think the Sony verse is where you're going to see him. And maybe you won't even see Andrew Garfield. We talked about it, I think, last week or the week before. This is where you got to bring up Miles Morales, man. Miles Morales is the Spider Man of the Sony verse. I think that's. Although, in, in, again, though, in, in Morbius, though, we see Spider Man and it says murderer on the, on the poster, right? On the. T- on the sidewalk when he's walking on a building or whatever. So I don't know if they know where this takes place in. And I, I'm not even sure Sony cares. Dude, I think it would be so cool if he does have the ability to teleport through dimensions. And at the end of his movie, just like that venom, whatever situation post credit, he gets pulled in or he accidentally does something where he's trying to run for his life and gets put in here. I don't know why he gets caught or why he's allowing himself to be arrested either. That's kind of like he could just escape. I don't know. Well, I think he's a he's they're playing Morbius as a good guy, right? So a so good guy. Yeah, I think a good guy would allow mm. himself to be arrested or turn himself in. I think that's and then obviously as the movie goes on, he will no longer be he will no longer be in there. Um as Steve just smashes something in anger <laughs> over Morbius coming out. <laughs> I love the question. But do you guys though, have any other we're... final thoughts before we move on from, from Dr. Morbius? Yeah, the questions that he's muted. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I thought I unmuted. With um him being arrested, does that t- to me that kind of ties into his the, the scenes that they showed in the trailer with uh, uh Vulture, yeah, with Bruce mm-hmm. uh, Bruce Wills, Michael Keaton. Um yep. you know, so that I get however they get to that point, I don't know, but I think that's that's their connection is some something in prison you're laughing and it's so confusing because you know marvel marvel has to omit things from their trailers and hide things where sony right now is just like we have no idea what's going on so they can just put whatever in. they don't have to hide anything in the trailers because nobody knows any of the answers yet mm-hmm. hiding in plain sight <laughs> that's so true yep. Yep. 